can I? Okay, so thank you for having me here. This is a joint work with uh, O'Sally Berti and uh, Jason Stargess. And uh, we look at uh, credit rating, but uh, in a way that is uh, a bit different uh, to the extensive literature on uh, the financial crisis. Credit rating are extensively used not only in the issuer paying pays model, but are also used by uh, commercial bank that uh, provide the internal credit rating uh, to their borrowers. And uh, regulators uh, sometimes uh, have uh, the idea of uh, using this uh, internal credit rating uh, to decrease uh, the extent of information asymmetry in uh, credit markets. How? <coughs> Through public credit registry. And what we ask in this paper is whether banks manipulate their internal credit ratings before being compelled to share them in a public credit registry. So, in, in particular, what we are going to ask is whether the commercial banks that engage more in manipulations are the ones that in the basis of some theories that I will introduce in some in a moment, are the ones with uh, greater uh, informational runs and uh, therefore uh, stronger incentives uh, to manipulate. Why is this important? Well, it's important because it may inform the design of uh, pu uh, public credit registry and in general can help to understand the extent to which financial uh, banking system can really be integrated or whether foreign banks will always remain with uh, uh, information disadvantage. So what do we know on uh, credit registry and uh, information sharing between uh, lenders? Well, uh, um, most of the theory uh, relies on work by Marco Pagano and co-author and has highlighted that, well, when information is shared, of course, uh, loans uh, and credit is uh, better allocated, so more loans go to credit-worthy borrowers. However, banks may have no incentive to willingly uh, share this information. Why? Well, there is a competition effect that goes uh, against uh, this uh, positive effect on profits uh, that comes from a decrease on losses. That is, when banks uh, share their information about who the most credit-worthy borrowers are, well, they attract more competition from other potential lenders. So, if the first effect prevail, well, the banks uh, create uh, some credit bureaus and decide to share information about the borrowers. But if the second effect prevails, well, we don't see any cre uh, private credit bureaus. But uh, the uh, state of the theory is such that it is uh, sort of believed that the government can step in, create a public credit registry, and ask banks uh, to provide different type of information. Of course, uh, there is hard information that can be credibly shared, but uh, there is also soft, more soft, less verifiable information like uh, the one that is uh, uh, communicated uh, through this uh, uh, credit rating. So empirically, what do we know? Well, empirically, it has been apparently much easier to get data on uh, uh, private uh, credit registry, credit bureaus. And uh, typically, what is found uh, is that the introduction of a credit bureaus uh, improves uh, the allocation of credit. We know much less uh, on uh, the effect on allocation of credit of uh, public credit registries. We have uh, some work that is uh, more uh, cross-sectional in nature uh, by Schleifer and Kotor that has shown that uh, some, somewhat surprisingly there seem to be uh, better allocation of credit in countries with private credit bureaus, but the public credit registries uh, do not seem to have a similar effect. And what we argue is that uh, the empirical evidence that we show can sort of help to explain uh, these uh, puzzling uh, empirical evidence. 
So what do we do and what are our testable hypotheses? So uh, remember what we want to go and test is whether banks that are compelled to share uh, their uh, ratings in a public credit registries have an incentive to manipulate. So in order to have some meaningful tests, I have to use existing theory to understand in which directions incentives would go for a different type of borrowers. So take a bank that is lending to a borrower that knows to be high quality, but this is a private information that is no, not known to other lenders. Well, we know from a number of influential theories that these banks enjoy an informational rent. Why? It can ch charge a high interest rate even if this borrower has a low probability of defaulting because if the borrower approached another lender, the other lender would be uh, inferring that the borrower is low quality. So when such a lender is forced to share its information and has to share also the internal credit rating, well, some incentive to manipulate the credit, the rating downwards may kick in. Okay, so we would expect that banks, especially the ones that on the basis of assisting theory and empirical evidence we predict to have a high informational advantage have an incentive to strategically downgrade uh, high quality borrowers. Incentives are different for uh, borrowers that are low quality. So here we think that especially um, uh, lenders that uh, are lending to a, low quality, a relatively low quality borrowers with a uh, high probability of default, that has many lenders may have an incentive to hide re, uh, negative information. Why? Well, uh, there are theories that tell us that uh, there might be uh, incentive for a credit run. If a foreign bank is lending to, uh, um, to a given borrower and now knows that the local bank gives an iffy rating to this borrower, well, the foreign bank says, ha ha, this borrower is perhaps riskier than what I initially thought. Let me just withdraw my loan nowadays. But of course, this would backfire in the balance sheet of uh, the domestic lender with private information. So here, uh, a lender that is sharing uh, a client with other banks and has uh, somewhat uh, negative information may have an incentive to hide this negative information and uh, to strategically upgrade this uh, borrower in order to sa safeguard uh, its balance sheet. So theory here give us two different implications for borrowers that are pri privately known to be high and low quality and also for borrowers that have single or multiple lenders because we expect the private information advantage of high quality borrowers to be higher for single banks. And also we expect the credit runs to be possible only if there are other lenders because otherwise clearly those incentives wouldn't be there. So what do we find? Well, we will find some incentive of uh, uh, some evidence of manipulation. And I will show that, uh, well, this manipulation indeed decreases the effects of the cre uh, public cre uh, credit registry that we explore. We also show that the ratings become less informative in predicting default once they are public. Of course, uh, showing uh, these stories is hard. Why? Well, assume that I am, uh, that I were considering uh, just an expansion of uh, a public credit registry. Well, uh, in that case, uh, when uh, the credit registry is expanded, what I would have, well, there are some learning effects because presumably, uh, 
foreign banks can learn something from domestic banks. And, uh, there and this would be confounded with the incentive to manipulate that I'm arguing that exists, but uh, probably manipulation would be just a second order. And second, the other concern is that if the public credit registry affects as a blanket all borrowers, well, I could never identify some aftershocks that can affect the economy from uh, some downgrades that are strategic. So to address these effects, we that uh, uh, the Argentinian credit registries uh, provides the ideal uh, environment, precisely for the way in which it was implemented. So I tell you first what uh, the, uh, I describe briefly the Argentinian public credit registry, and then I will uh, describe the natural experiment that uh, we argue helps us uh, to identify cleanly the effects that uh, I just described. So this is uh, by the central. Where shall I go? Okay. So this is this is uh, basically a database that uh, is uh, operated by the central bank, and uh, it was uh, at some point uh, during 1998 extended also to small borrowers. There is uh, nothing in the economy that uh, explained this extension. It was just that at that time, CD-ROMs became uh, popular. And this allowed the registry to be extended to borrowers with uh, total debt below $200,000. So um, my co-author, uh, Jose, uses uh, this natural experiment also in another paper, just in case you are curious, he doesn't look at credit rating, he is actually the one who showed empirically that a credit run may be uh, um, something that happens. So, and uh, what is in the credit registry? Well, the credit registry um, provides uh, the amount of the loan, the collateral pledged, and then, crucially for us, there are uh, these uh, internal rating of the borrowers. And there is some negative and positive information. Some of the ratings, ratings uh, from three to five, are uh, ratings uh, that uh, are uh, mechanically calculated based uh, on the number of delinquency days uh, of uh, the borrowers. So if a borrower is uh, delinquent for some 90 days, uh, gets one of uh, those re negative uh, ratings. Those ratings, uh, this uh, negative information, was shared even uh, before uh, the uh, expansion of the credit registry. So the new information that we argue is uh, shared in uh, mm, uh, the middle of 1908, when CD-ROMs become available, is information about how creditworthy the borrowers that are not delinquent are. That is, it becomes public whether the lender is giving the borrower a one, so this is the best borrower ever, or is giving the borrower a two, this borrower is current with payment, but the lender has uh, some concerns about the future <coughs> probability of uh, uh, repaying the loan. So basically what we argue is that is uh, these ratings of one or two that uh, are the rating that uh, lenders can eventually manipulate. So let me tell you how this uh, um, registry was uh, implemented. So, we have information about what the banks were reporting to the central bank in the first three months of 1998, when the banks thought that this would have remained information shared only with the central bank. That is, that the competitor would have not learned about their rating. At some point in um, March 1998, it is announced that the ratings will be shared through this uh, um, the distribution of a CD-ROM. But uh, the, uh, the CD-ROM was going to be distributed 
only starting from June 98. So put differently, we have a post-expansion period in which the information is really shared, but there is an interim period in which banks know that they will have to share their information, but that this information is not visible to outsiders. So, okay. so what does this mean? Well, this means that our treatment period in order to identify the manipulation effect is this interim period when banks know that they will have to share their information with other lenders, but they cannot have been affected in their judgment by the information that other lenders have and are sharing with the credit registry just because they cannot observe it. So put differently, when I go and I do my empirical analysis, I will compare the interim period, that is my uh, treatment period, with the two sort of control period, that is the pre-expansion period, when banks didn't know that they would have to share their credit rating, and then with a post-expansion period when there is actually full disclosure. So, Basically, in my identification, what I have is that, well, I can compare these three different periods, and I, if there is manipulation, I expect to have effects only in the interim period, but I also have a control sample of borrowers that are unaffected. Why? Well, the information for them was already public because they were or, uh, relatively larger borrowers with loans above 200,000 whose information was already shared. And uh, I would argue that also the uh, tight theoretical implications help us in the identification because I have opposite implication for borrowers that are high quality and low quality. Even if you believe and uh, I think that there is no reason, but even if you believe that my control sample is not that good, you would have to come with a sort of shock that affects positively borrowers that have been rated two, so that are iffy, and affects negatively borrowers that have been rated very highly. So, let me go to my uh, uh, empirical framework, uh, and then I will give you also a more uh, informal uh, uh, sort of view of the results. So all our results are basically based on a difference in difference framework, and uh, basically we look for manipulation, looking at this uh, double interaction. So if we see abnormal downgrades of high quality borrowers in the interim period, we think, uh, uh, we think that this is evidence of manipulation. Now, uh, of course, some of you might think it could be that before sharing the ratings, these banks were <coughs> simply reviewing them and were making the information more current. I argue that this cannot explain my results, and I will try to highlight the results that are against this interpretation. What I want to highlight is that, of course, there would be some, also borrowers would want to manipulate if the sharing of the ratings can make information more spread out and might decrease the cost of my loan, well, then I have an incentive to borrow more than $200,000 in order to be more visible to other lenders. And we see some evidence of this. We see that the density of borrowers above the cutoff is a bit larger. But good news for us, we also see that the distribution of main borrower characteristics like the fraction of borrowers with a single uh, relationship, the uh, fraction of borrowers with a rating of ones and so on, is uh, continuous at the left and the right of the cutoff, suggesting that the uh, necessary uh, assumption for difference in difference are satisfied. And this is basically what we find, is uh, the blue lines 
is the uh, proportion of downgrades of high quality borrowers in the interim period. You can see that he is larger than uh, the red line only in the period in which we would expect the strategic manipulation, that is uh, after the announcement of the registry expansion and uh, before learning uh, can occur. And uh, the difference with the control group is uh, only in uh, this uh, interim period. So let me get to what we find in a bit uh, informal way. So I like these uh, two figures, so uh, let's go to the first panel. So this is the fraction of borrowers with a credit rating of two, so the EFI borrowers, that are for the treatment and the control group. The different colors uh, refer to um, their fraction in the pre, interim, and post period. So what do you observe here? You, in a, for the control group, ratings were already public. Well, so what do you observe? There is a convergence in the proportion of borrowers with a rating of two from the group for which these ratings were first a private information to the bank to the group for which the ratings were already public. And this, is, so, and this is true also in the group of borrowers that, have, that had multiple lenders. But uh, you observe the contrary. In the group of borrowers between multiple lenders, when the rating was private information, there was initially a larger fraction of uh, ratings of two that were potentially damaging for the lenders. When the lender knows that the information becomes public, this proportion decreases. And uh, so can this be just uh, updating? Well, I think that the strongest evidence against this uh, just uh, a review of the rating before sharing them is that the ratings become relatively less informative. And a way to look at this issue is through these simple statistics. I will apply also my difference in difference uh, framework, but I think that this is quite telling. So what, do I, what I have here is the probability of default of the borrowers in our sample. You see that on average it doesn't change much before and after the reform. However, what you see is that uh, what I argue that says that the ratings become less informative, that is uh, borrowers with uh, the highest rating, so the borrowers that were rated to be the best, were less likely to actually default before the reform than afterwards. So this would suggest that lenders become more likely to give the highest rating to relatively riskier borrowers of lower quality. Same for borrowers with a rating of two, the uh, IFI rating, but everything goes the other way around. So these borrowers that were considered IFI are relatively more likely to default before the ratings are public than afterwards. So this number suggests that the lender shifted some relatively lower quality borrowers, uh, some relatively higher quality borrowers to the category of two, we argue to hide their private information. So all of these, uh, of course, can be regularly, uh, more rigorously shown within our uh, difference in different framework. Unsurprisingly, for, uh, deep, uh, given all what I told you, we find that, uh, well, the borrowers who ra whose rating becomes public become relatively more likely to be upgraded if they are ex ante high, uh, to be downgraded if they are ex ante, ex -ante rated to be high quality. The cross-sectional effect supports our story. 
So which banks do we expect to have a higher informational rent? Well, single lenders. If a borrower has already multiple lenders, possibly other lenders already have acquired this kind of information. So, and indeed, what we find is that these uh, strategic downgrades are uh, relatively less likely for borrowers uh, with uh, multiple lenders. We, uh, we also run a placebo and show that uh, this, goes on, this happens only for uh, the discretional rating. We don't find uh, that any of these uh, borrowers uh, become relatively more likely to be delinquent. There is more to do on, that we can do from the point of view of the uh, cross-sectional effects. In banking, we know that uh, domestic banks, and especially local banks that are specialized in a given province, tend to have more soft information. This is precisely the kind of private information that allows a lender to earn an informational monopoly. So we should observe that domestic banks, and local banks in particular, are the ones that strategically downgrade high quality borrower. And this is uh, precisely what we find here. Basically, all our effects are uh, driven by local and domestic banks. We do not find that uh, foreign banks, the ones that are considered to be at an informational disadvantage, uh, engage in this kind of behavior. You may ask, what else are the banks doing? Perhaps they are changing the, uh, their credit exposure, and this would suggest that they are reacting to their information. We find no evidence that they change the amount of the loan. We uh, find no evidence that the collateralization of the loan changes. But even in the difference in difference framework, we find that, uh, well, the uh, ratings become relatively less informative. That is, well, borrowers that are uh, given a IFI rating of two were relatively more likely to become delinquent in the pre-period. That is, uh, Expose the quality of the borrowers with a rating of two is uh, higher. Then we go and test the second set of, emp of empirical implication. Remember the incentives for multiple lenders of relatively low quality firms are opposite. These lenders want to reassure the other lenders to their low quality borrowers and saying, everything is going fine, continue to lend to uh, this uh, customer. Because a creditor run could, of course, impair if also the ability to repay their own loan. So here the incentive would be to strategically upgrade low quality borrowers with multiple lenders. This is precisely what we find, and interestingly, single lenders do not upgrade the borrowers that have ex ante at you. So this is what we should observe if this was just a systematic review of all the ratings. And of course, in our data structure, ratings can go only up and down, so this was, this is, this was a concern for us. Also in this case, ratings have become less informative, and surprise, surprise, borrowers with a rating of one were less likely to default before the uh, sharing of the information on the rating. So now you might be wondering, so what are the real effects of uh, this uh, uh, public credit registry? Did the nature of uh, um, bank relationship uh, uh, change at all? So let me show uh, uh, the evidence with uh, um, some tables. So, so 
In general, so what we would expect is that, especially for borrowers with high degree of asymmetric information, that is, the single lender borrowers, we would expect that once information is shared, there is a, a um, larger ability to establish a new relationship. We don't find that on average, the number of bank relationship increases, but we do find that banks that can be considered to be informationally disadvantaged increase their proportion of lending to these borrowers. So there is some substitution. So there are some effects, but the manipulation of the lender is also effective. If we restrict the previous sample, to borrowers that have a single relationship and that have been downgraded in the interim period. So in this way, we attempt to single out the strategic downgrades. What do we find? Well, the number of bank relationship of these borrowers increases less than for other borrowers, and they cannot rely uh, as much as the other affected borrower on an increase in foreign loans. So let me conclude. What I did show you is that despite the large use of ratings in the financial system to uh, share information, there are incentives to manipulate not only in the issuer pays model, but in general also when the rating is attributed by the lender. And in particular, our results are important for the design of public credit registry. Of course, lots of information is shared in these registries, uh, sharing of hard information uh, like the collateralization of the loan may indeed improve the allocation of credit, but uh, we cast uh, some doubt uh, on uh, the effect uh, arising from the sharing of uh, credit ratings uh, because we show that uh, these are manipulated and therefore their, the extent to which they are useful is not very large. And uh, I look forward to Mitch's comments. <laughs>